Hey, how's it going guys? It's your boy. Now, I'm a little bit late to this story, but I think it's something that's very interesting to me, and I think it'd be interesting to you, because this is something that's really close to my heart, and that is gaming and censorship in gaming, and this is actually a positive story for a change. You know, with E3 and the stories about Dead or Alive and Smash Brothers, you know, with Japanese developers now pandering to what they must perceive as a Western standards, even though these are just a minority of people's standards. I might get into that in a later video. All I'll say is they have pandered by toning down, removing options and graphics that may be perceived to be problematic, essentially. This story, which was a week or two ago, maybe a week ago, does at least give somebody hope. It will give us hope that maybe there is a light at the end of the tunnel and the industry will recover from the cancer that social justice has uh, inflicted upon it. Now, this is Valve. Valve, yes. Valve are changing the way that they, you know, uh, accept games onto their marketplace. And it seems that they are deciding to ditch the really uh, censorious and, quite frankly, strict guidelines uh, in the way that a, a game has to be because usually if you're a game that is like a visual novel and it's very adult or orientated and it has a lot of nudity and it's basically porn as they don't like pornographic material even though most people who use steam are adults and you know porn isn't immoral it's not going to harm your business model in fact if anything it would probably make them richer but whatever they had their reasons this meant that a lot of games, even though they're showing graphic sexual content, that's not necessarily porn, but they're getting banned from Steam, and these Japanese game developers are being robbed of a chance to get a better audience, a, a bigger audience. And also, it's not just a it's not just them. Games like I think there was a a game that was about like a spree shooter that got censored, that got removed from green light. Now I've heard things about that, but regardless. And then also there was Hatred, which was about that. That temporarily got removed before being put back on again because people were saying it has a right to be there. And it didn't turn out to be as controversial as the trailer suggested it was going to be. That's why trailers lie, guys. But anyway, let's go to Valve's uh, little statement about this. It's quite long. And then the gaming media's response. Or rather, just one article in particular I think really highlights the response. Because they're not happy with Valve just deciding to open the floodgates. Which, I mean, to us, that, that, that's no surprise. But to a lot of people, like, well, shouldn't that be a good thing? Anyway, so to Valve. Who gets to be on the Steam Store? Recently, there's been a bunch of community discussion around what kind of games are allowing onto the Steam Store. As is often the case, the discussion caused us to spend some time examining what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how we could be doing it better. Decision making in this space is particularly challenging and one that we've really struggled with. Contrary to many assumptions, this isn't a space we've automated. Humans at Valve are very involved. Groups of people looking at the contents of every controversial title submitted to us. Similarly, people have falsely assumed these decisions are heavily affected by our payment processes or outside interest groups. Nope, it's just us grappling with a really hard problem. Now I do agree that they're not automated. I've not seen anything to suggest that they are using bots. I mean, I'm sure they must be using something like that for things that humans just can't because of our brains and other things. It might take a long time to do. So maybe metrics, there'll be an algorithm there. But in terms of removing content, it's definitely a human being doing that. Now, I don't believe them when they say that outside interest groups aren't having an influence on them. I'm pretty sure they have done because there's been loads of backlashes against them. Now, an interest group could be anything. It could be an actual group or it could be a community. These have had effects on them and they have removed or reinstated or put on games because of those people. That is a simple truth, but that's a nitpick, so let's continue. Unfortunately, our struggling has resulted in a bunch of confusion among our customers, developer partners, and even our own employees. So we spent some time thinking about where we want to be on this, and we'd like to talk about it now. But we also think it's critical to talk about how we've arrived at our position so you can understand the trade-offs we're making. When it's not just confusing your customers and even developers, because, you know, developers' livelihoods depend on this platform, 
especially if they just make entirely for PC. But it's also confusing your own employees. You definitely do need to do some soul searching to figure out the mess. The challenge is that this problem is not simply about whether or not the Steam store should contain games with adult or violent content. Instead, it's about whether the store contains games with an entire range of controversial topics, politics, sexuality, racism, gender, violence, identity and so on. In addition, there are controversial topics that are particular to games, like what even constitutes a game, or what level of quality is appropriate before something can be released. And those are fair questions that I would of course answer them and say, yeah, let them on unless they're actually calling for the deaths of people or for the destruction of things. If it's just discussing an idea, if it's just representing an idea, that's fine. And also, yeah, what constitutes a game is quite controversial. Like, I don't consider the walking simulators like Gone Home and the shovelware that Valve and Steam have been in trouble with, especially with the whole problems with, I think, is it Devolver Digital? That might be completely other company that I've accidentally slandered. But uh, there was several gaming developers who were just creating crap content that was just terrible. They were just asset swapping and making new games and the terrible buggy messes that are just designed to get as many sales as possible and they run with the money. They're not games. They're cash cows. That's what they are. They're, they're just vessels designed to infiltrate Steam and take your money because they'll try and trick you into thinking it's going to be a great game and it's going to be amazing or it's on green light it's going to improve but it never does they just run with the money and also the visual novels technically speaking they're not really games but they are interactive stories they're novels that you play a part in you, you click on dialogue options or story options and is that any different to the walking dead or game of thrones or anything else Telltale has ever made? The only difference is the graphics. Common questions we ask ourselves when trying to make decisions didn't help in this space. What do players wish we would do? What would make them most happy? What's considered acceptable discussion behaviour imagery varies significantly around the world, socially and legally. Even when we pick a single country or state, the legal definitions around these topics can be too broad or vague to allow us to avoid making subjective and interpretive decisions. The harsh reality of this space that lies at the root of our dilemma is that there is absolutely no way we can navigate it without making some of our players really mad. It is a paradox, it is a conundrum, and I think the best thing to do is what they're trying to do now. Yeah, they will have to make some concessions to countries where, this, like for example Germany or uh, Australia who are very stringent on video games, I mean Australia of all places, I know, but they have quite the reputation for censorship, just as Target and GTA and Rockstar. Yeah, that's that's things they're going to have to do. But yeah, I don't agree with it and I think they shouldn't be doing that, but when I mean, it's forced upon you, there's not much you can do. In addition, Valve is not a small company, we're not a homogeneous group. The online debates around these topics play out inside Valve as well. We don't all agree on what deserves to be on the store. When we say there's no way of, of, to avoid making a bunch of people mad when making decisions in this space, we're including our own employees, their families and their communities in that, which is interesting. So there has been some, I hesitate to call it turmoil, but arguments in the company and that's good. That means the company is not an echo chamber and it seems that, you know, Gabe Newell is fostering a creative and free environment in his company, which is laudable. It's not something that everybody does a la Google. That's something that every company, I think, within reason, should be fostering because it, look, look, look at Steam now. They're big. So we ended up going back to one of the principles in the forefront of our minds when we started Steam, and more recently as we worked on Steam Direct to open up the store to many more developers. Valve shouldn't be the ones deciding this. If you're a player, we shouldn't be choosing for you what content you can or can't buy. If you're a developer, we shouldn't be choosing what content you're allowed to create. Those choices should be yours to make. Our role should be to provide systems and tools to support your efforts to make these choices for yourself and to help you do it in a way that makes you feel comfortable. And that's exactly what Steam is. Steam is more for a, as a platform to just sell your game. That is what Steam is. You are the middleman between me and the developers. A necessary one. With that principle in mind, we decided that the right approach is to allow everything onto the Steam store, except for things that we decide are illegal or straight up trolling. That's f fair enough. That's fair enough. I mean, I guess straight up trolling is kind of subjective, but you know it when you see it, I guess. Taking this approach allows us to focus less on trying to police what should be on Steam 
and more in building those tools to give people control over what kinds of content they see. We already have some tools, but they're too hidden and not nearly comprehensive enough. We're going to enable you to override our recommendation algorithms and hide games containing the topics you're not interested in. So if you don't want to see anime games on your store, you'll be able to make that choice. If you want more options to control exactly what kinds of games your kids see when they browse the store, you'll be able to do that. And it's not just players that need better tools either. Developers who build controversial content shouldn't have to deal with harassment because their game exists and will be building tools and options to support them too. And I think that this is the most important thing, choice. This is what every other company like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, they're robbing us of choice. They're robbing us from the ability to basically see what we want to see and said they're policing what we are going to see. So if I don't want to see, for example, even though I, I don't really care, fascist content, I should be able to just block that. You know, if anybody turns up, I can just block them and like not have to deal with it. Instead, Twitter or Facebook will block them for me. They'll ban them for me, even though I don't need them to. And then YouTube will do similar things with their algorithms and, and push me content that I don't want to see, but instead will bury the content that I want to see, which is why their demonetization and why their algorithms are tuned the way that they are. Steam is doing the opposite. And that's great. As we mentioned earlier, laws vary around the world, so we're going to need to handle this on a case-by-case basis. As a result, we will almost certainly continue to struggle with this one for a while. Our current thinking is that we're going to push developers to further disclose any potentially problematic content in their games during the submission process, and cease doing business with any of them that refuse to do so honestly. We'll still continue to perform technical evaluations of submissions, rejecting games that don't pass until the issues have been resolved. Now, it's all very, uh, sock just see in with the language but I guess they're saying as long as they are open about what's in the game it will be allowed on and if they lie then they'll be taken off which I guess is fair nobody should have to lie but then again what developer unless again they're a scam artist is going to lie and another thing is at least they are taking it by a case by case basis rather than just flat out saying if this is something like that like it used to be no we don't want it at the very least, it's a case-by-case -case basis, and I, I think that's very realistic. What does this mean? It means that the Steam store is going to contain something that you hate and don't think should exist. Unless you don't have any opinions, that's guaranteed to happen. But you're also going to see something on the store that you believe should be there, and some other people will hate it and want it not to exist. It also means that the games we allow into the store will not be a reflection of Valve's values beyond the simple belief that you all have the right to create and consume the content you choose. The two points above apply to all of us at Valve as well. If you see something on Steam that you think should not exist, it's almost certain that someone at Valve is right there with you. And that that's just a realistic appraisal of what human beings are like. And I'm glad that they are taking this in and are creating policy around it. This will only help everybody in the long run. To be explicit about that, if we allow your game onto the store, it does not mean we approve or agree with anything you're trying to say with it. If you're a developer of offensive games, this isn't us siding with you against all the people you're offending. There will be people throughout the Steam community who hate your game, and hope you will fail to find an audience. And there will be people here at Valve who feel exactly the same way. However, offending someone shouldn't take away your game's voice. We believe you should be able to express yourself like everyone else, and to find others who want to play your game. But that's it, and that's all I really asked for if I was a developer. A professional relationship. And this is, this is brilliant. I had a smile on my face reading that. <laughs> yes, we may like or dislike it, but at the end of the day, it's business. I like this approach. I know it's purely for the money, but at the same time, there is something there that they have realised that, yeah, we can't go around policing. In the short term, we won't make significant changes to what's arriving on Steam until we finish some of the tools we've described in the post. As we thought we managed to convey, navigating these issues is messy and complicated. Countries and societies change their laws and cultural norms over time. We'll be working on this for the foreseeable future, both in terms of what products we're allowing, what guidelines we communicate, and the tools we're providing to developers and players. And that is... that's good. That's very good. That is something that everybody should, in theory, get behind. Valve is simply being more of a uh, middleman than just being the platform kind of like YouTube for developers to share if they're releasing it for free or to sell their content. However, one particular person who I think sums up the whole backlash against this is a, a one called Leaf Corcoran. Yeah, uh, Leaf Corcoran. Yeah, what a hipster name. I mean, I guess it's not his fault. But he's the founder of itch.io and uh, he finds this to be most problematic, shall we say. 
and this is on gamesindustry.biz. Itch.io founder Leif Cochran has described Valve's new open door policy on Steam content as ridiculous and out of touch, voicing concerns that the shift will result in a variety of problematic content proliferating on Valve's store. Well, yeah, Valve know this. That's why they're doing it. Because they realise that they themselves cannot be the dictator and dictate to people what they can and cannot buy. That's not their role. Their role is to simply be the method of transaction, like game, like a Best Buy, like anything like that. That's what they are. They may not agree with anything, but at the end of the day, it's business and they will benefit from selling these people's games. Because I'm sure they get a cut, that's how they run their business. How is it ridiculous, exactly? How is it out of touch? This is what gamers, because I don't. I think this is just projection on his part, because he's the one who's clearly out of touch. Gamers just want their games. They don't want censorship, they don't want features removed, because it may violate some cultural norm, because it is all subjective. Gamers don't want that. Gamers want their games. They don't want to be censored, they don't want to be dictated to. Yeah, you're saying that that's what gamers want. Maybe you want that. Maybe you and your little clique in the, the Bay Area want it, but uh, <laughs> we don't. Valve announced its new outlook yesterday in a statement on the Steam blog. And the shift valued a variety of incidents that created uncertainty around content standards. Most recently, a number of visual novels with adult themes receiving official warnings. And that was the problem, because these are meant for adults. And yet, adults are being policed by Valve and not being allowed to have their adult content. This will now change, as now Valve are treating us like adults, who have the ability and the consciousness to essentially, you know, buy what we want. We're not all kids. And I do like that they are thinking that, yeah, a parent needs to be able to protect their kids or to stop their kids from buying things that are inappropriate for them. At least they're giving us the power rather than doing it for us like YouTube. However, Valve's response has attracted criticism from the founder of itch.io, an indie-friendly storefront intended to be an alternative to Steam. Well, you are going to be out of business, itch. You're out of touch, and you're going to be left behind by Steam and other companies like GOG, who will be jumping on this tr trend, or at the very least will be approaching business from this angle, and you, will, you won't have a company anymore because you censor your content, because you police your content. Who even uses your platform? I don't use your platform. I use Uplay more than Itch. Speaking on Twitter yesterday, founder Leif Cochran pulled no punches in his assessment. A platform that allows everything, unless it's illegal or straight up trolling, is ridiculous, Cochran said. Please keep your malicious, derogatory, discriminatory, bullying, harassing, demeaning content off itch.io. Our band buttons are ready. How can a game be harassing? That's what I want to know. A game cannot harass a person. A game is just a game. It's an interactive form of media. Now, some people say, yeah, but the Anita Sarkeesian game. Yeah, but there was a George Bush game too. And you're not hurting the actual person. Maybe their feelings. But at the end of the day, nobody's sending her that game. Nobody is actually doing anything to them, it's a game. And a shitty one at that is barely a game, probably not even a game. I just, I don't understand where it's got all this from, how games can be all the, these things. Maybe they can be discriminatory in the sense of how they approach a topic or they represent a certain thing, but again, you don't have to buy that game. Valve's not saying that you have to buy it. Valve aren't going to promote the game, they're just going to allow it onto the platform, and it's up to the people to decide. Voting with your wallet, have you heard of that? I guess a lot of people are going to be voting with their wallet on your on your website soon. After seeing responses to his post flood in, Cochran said, it's sad that most of the people in that thread are worried about asset flips. What about the fact that Valve is effectively authorising toxic people to exist on their platform? It's so out of touch. Wait, so Valve are the out of touch ones by talking to their fans, or at the very least hearing what their fans have to say, and also people within the company who represent these people are very have similar thoughts and they've decided to open the doors and I'm making a an effort to stop things like asset flips and illegal content. Yet they're the out of touch ones for doing that. Yet you're not and you're basically attacking people for wanting more games, for being anti censorship, for being pro-choice in a sense. Because as far as I'm aware, they're not letting toxic people on, whatever a toxic person is. It is whatever you think it is. It is whatever the current uh, paradigm has decided is the people they're gonna hate, whether it be incels or the alt-right or MRAs or whatever. 
It changes with the wind. That's what it is. Indeed, when we spoke to Cochran in May, he anticipated just this kind of shift on Val's part. I have a strong feeling that Steam will probably be completely open sometime in the future, but they're just trying to work up to that. And there's nothing wrong with being open unless you yourself are an authoritarian who wants to dictate to people what they can and cannot buy or like because you have a political agenda to shift, right guys? In an article published yesterday, we spoke the developers caught up in Valve's recent crackdown on games with adult themes, many of which had been on Steam for a long time, had milder adult content than other games that escaped warnings. In every case, the developers were critical of Valve's ad hoc approach to content standards and suggested it had a chilling effect on the kind of games being made. And they quote Robert Yang, who must be a developer, and he says, Everyone, we need thoughtful leadership. Valve, let the market sort it out. Valve, anime, lol, by the way, you owe us 30% of your sales. And this did have a chilling effect. And it's good that Valve recognised that, although they kind of worded it differently with the, with the uh, statement, and are making amends. And yet, this guy, this itch.io founder, is saying that they're out of touch? Really? I've talked to one Valve rep, and I'm like, I want to put this kind of content on Steam. And the Valve rep responded, yeah, that seems okay. I'll let you know if we change our mind. Which doesn't provide any certainty, said Robert Yang, a developer whose games explore gay culture and gay experience. It puts developers in a weird position because we have to guess how Valve's mind will change on something. It's like three layers of guessing. And this guy is something that that itch.io guy should really be supporting. He's an LBG, LGBT developer touching on LGBT themes. Now, I don't know what games he makes. I assume they must be pretty indie. We should be right at home with him, but because he's all for this open door policy, hmm, it's kind of funny how they're only for open borders when it's uh, politically convenient, right? This would be good for him because now Valve isn't going to just ban games or let in games on a whim. They're just going to say if it's not illegal, if it's not trolling, if it's not a scam, we'll let you put your game out there and find its audience and it'll sink or swim. I almost kind of wish Valve would tell me, no, that content will never be allowed on Steam, ever, because at least there would be certainty. That's the reality. They don't want to do heavy content moderation, but then they end up making these random decisions that don't benefit anyone. And that's why this has changed, because they don't want to do that. They realise that that is not good for their business model. It's not good at all. It's not good for anybody to have a scattergun approach to content. Best to just weed out the illegal stuff and the trolling and whatever they want to call it and let the legit people sink or swim on the market. And apparently that's out of touch. Well, this is what developers want. This is what indie developers want, because a lot of these people who are suffering are not big companies, they're small ones. The small businesses are, are losing out. That's exactly what pretty much the whole games media has been saying, that this is out of touch, that it's letting in toxicity, and it's, it's going to, you know, it's going to change people into Nazis and things like that, isn't it? When it isn't, all they're allowing is people to buy their own content and to sell their own content and let's be honest the things that they talk about will not be big because one the audiences for them are tiny and two most people would never go for that content in lean years so in the end this is good for the gaming community this is good for the industry it's good for all businesses all around so that's really all i have to say so until next time it's been your boy and i'll see you later